Hi guys, hope you're all doing great. It's been a while since I've done a cello tutorial, so I thought that it would be a good opportunity for me to do this because I'm currently practicing to perform the Sinson Cello Concerto. Um, and actually exactly one week from today in Texas with the Victoria Symphony. Um, and I've been practicing, doing very slow practice, even though I've played this piece since I was 11 and I'm 33, so 22 years, but it still requires very careful practice because it's amazing how quickly your muscle memory uh, just somehow magically disappears uh, without constant practice. Um, so I thought that I would share today because I've gotten some comments on Instagram from uh, cello students, from young cellists, asking, uh, Tina, how do you practice difficult passages? Now, difficult um, is very subjective, of course, but I'm uh, one of the uh, things that are difficult when it comes to playing the cello purely on a technical level is playing fast um, and accurately, you know? Uh, so there's a lot of fast playing, but sometimes it cannot be very accurate. Um, so I'm going to talk about that. Of course, it's also difficult to play musically and to find your own voice, but for today, we are just going to talk about the purely, not robotic, but the purely technical aspect of playing this instrument um, in a clear way and how you learn to play a difficult passage. So right now, I'm gonna play probably, you know, if you've played this concerto before, that tricky double stop passage in the first movement in the first section that everybody talks about. Um, I am going to just play it first at full speed. Hopefully I don't mess up um, <laughs> or I'll have to take more of my own advice, which I do need to do. And then I'll talk about how I practice it. And I actually still remember how I began practicing this passage when I was 11 years old. Um, and from 11 to 33, there's no difference, exactly the same uh, practice and technique. Um, so here we go. This is from, if you guys have the sheet music, it's from bar uh, 92. So this is like the really dramatic build-up section, right? Okay. And the orchestra plays the... Okay. if you heard that. Um, but anyway, that is the, uh, the passage that we are going to be discussing today. Okay, so the number one most important thing is to break everything up into very short little chunks and you have to practice a lot of patience and self-control because it can be very tempting to just try to like play really fast, play it, but do not be tempted um, to run before you can walk properly. Um, so make sure that whatever tempo you start at, and it should be super slow, um, you can play the notes in tune. So if you're just learning this, I'm gonna pretend I've never seen this before, right? So first thing is you have to figure out what fingerings you're using. Now, how do you do that? You can watch videos on YouTube. By the way, there's a video, a couple of videos of me playing this concerto on YouTube that uh, I think show quite a bit of the close up so you can see the fingerings. I do that a lot with other cellist videos, uh, cellists that I admire, um, and I look at different interpretations and I check out, oh, that's an interesting fingering, I'll try it out. So I do change things. So, first thing, before you even try to play, um, look at other people's videos and examples or maybe follow your teacher's suggestions um, and then test it out to see what works with your fingers because everybody's hands are different um, and what might work for you know a, a male cellist with huge hands is not going to work for my little asian hands so you really have to find what works for you so the very first bar we have uh basically it's just two chords over like you know traded back and forth so we have this one d and b and then we have a b and f this is pretty standard fingering. This is what I have in my sheet music. So, and you have to make sure it's in tune. Now, how do you tell um, if something's in tune if you don't have perfect pitch or sometimes even with perfect pitch, which I do have, I still get a little bit off and confused, right? So you open, make sure your strings are in tune. So if you have a fingered note that also has a brother or matching tone um, that is an open string, just use it, right? So this one, open D, pair, Pretty good. Okay. Now, it's the same note in the middle, right? So then you compare that to the next one. worried about 
about playing the notes in tune. Don't even worry about the rhythm, right? Don't worry about the right hand yet, because the right hand, it's pre it's just the whole time. So that's not the hard part. The hard, well, it gets harder later when you play fast, but one thing at a time. So tune, tuning first. Now, I remember when I was younger, um, when I first was learning this, I also used uh, this technique, right, to make sure I could hear each individual note to make sure they were in tune. So if I'm doing the run, I would I would separate each note. So. Exactly the same thing with the left hand. You're kind of finding the notes. It's just my right hand, the bow hand, is playing a different rhythm. So, um, you know, normally we play like this. But it's kind of hard to hear that uh, if you're first learning it. So just be really slow and patient. Make sure you know where the notes are. And then once you have that done, then you can start doing the, um, the actual uh, written bowing, so. is uh, let, let me see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve fifteen bars you know a little less than fifteen bars and I would spend daily if you're working on this for me I would spend at least an hour just on the fifteen bars because you have to start really really slowly use a metronome so if it's clicking click 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 and that might even actually be too fast if you're just learning and if you play one note out of tune like you stop you go back right eyes um, if you're able to see use your eyes and look at your fingers and see even so it's not just muscle memory but it's also using a visual cue visual reference as to how far how far does my finger move on my particular cello because as you know every single cello is different so just because a cello is the same size a full size no two manufacturers or makers make them exactly the same every single instrument is slightly different in where the positions are which makes it really tricky to play in tune um, if you're trying to play on a new instrument so you know check out your cello and your body and your fingers and figure out how what does it feel like in my finger, how far do I feel like I'm extending? Um, and then look at it. What does my finger look like when it goes into this new position? And it's just doing something over and over and over, right? Also, another way that you can practice it is do each shift um, as a pattern of two. So. <laughs> This is big, this is small, so it's like a tiny, tiny, you know, tiny difference. Um, small. Now, to tell you the truth, when you play it faster, especially when it's at full speed and really fast, sometimes if you make a it's slightly off, a quarter tone off, you can't really hear it, because by the time you hear it, it's already over, and you're playing a different note, 
but <laughs> uh, it's best to be as honest as possible. So if you practice very, very slowly to make sure it's in tune, and I know it's difficult um, because I myself, you know, I'm not a robot. I do play out of tune. Um, so in order to counteract the fact that I'm human uh, and I make mistakes, my fingers don't always do exactly um, what I hope that they'll always do. The best opportunity that you can give yourself is to kind of over practice, over prepare, play really, really slowly. Now, funny enough, I actually have a lot of trouble with this last phrase. Um, Oftentimes I'll get one of these shifts up here just a little bit out of tune and the D is always a little bit too sharp. So I'm gonna... give you a little bit of insight um, really the best thing to do is to just break everything down into little little chunks you know um, not even one bar like two two beat or one beat chunks two notes one uh, one shift to the next right <laughs> of looking you of course you can follow my fingerings if it works for your physique your body your hands um, but don't make the mistake of looking at my hand positions and trying to copy that because again every cello is different so maybe on some cellos that you know that um, perfect that fifth position is gonna look like this or look like that so um, make sure you take the time to figure out on your own cello and on your own body what works uh, and what is easier for you to play in tune what kind of fingerings um, and yeah that's that's it for today so hopefully you found that useful that is how I would recommend tackling a difficult a technically difficult fast complicated passage um, so now I'm gonna go back to practicing this actual phrase and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave a comment below. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and also check out some of my other uh, tutorial videos on the cello. Um, I have a tutorial series that's a little bit based more for the beginner cellist um, or I guess it could be useful just to kind of uh, remind yourself to reestablish, you know, proper positioning and what, what um, you know, the most maxim the maximum uh, potential that you can have in your body to stay relaxed while you're playing. Um, so if you want to check those out, that is also there for you. Have a great day. Bye guys.